I ordered a chemical analysis of the first oil drain at 2400 miles on this 2021 Honda Pilot with the 3.5 liter V6 naturally aspirated engine. I was curious to see if there will be any abnormal or excessive wear metals present in the oil. From my research, Honda engines are broken in at the factory by running them on a bench after assembly at a few thousand RPM for about a minute. This is done to test the engine and seat the piston rings. Well, the test results show that yes, there are elevated metals in the oil, and it also indicates some unique characteristics of the 0W20 synthetic that Honda uses. Okay, so here are the results. The above average aluminum levels are most likely from the piston rings settling into the aluminum cylinder walls, which introduces minute amounts of aluminum into the oil. Some may say this is from extra aluminum shavings from the manufacturing process, but with levels this low I doubt it. The engine bearings also contain aluminum which will shed into the oil when they are being broken in, which leads me to copper. The above average copper levels are most likely from engine bearings which are made of a copper aluminum alloy. The high molybdenum content is due to the additive package in the factory Honda oil. Molybdenum is commonly used as an anti-wear additive that produces an effect known as myoplating by depositing a thin layer of molybdenum on parts to reduce friction. The boron levels are very high but this is most likely due to the additive package where boron is used as a corrosion inhibitor for its anti-wear and antioxidant properties. The very high level of silicone is from the silicone-based sealers used to assemble the engine. I think this is just excessive sealer that flashed into the crankcase and broke down over time, which is why the levels are so high. The super high level of calcium is from the detergent package where calcium is used to suspend contaminants in the oil so they can be carried into the oil filter and removed. Like calcium, magnesium is used as a detergent and dispersant to collect particulate matter and bring it to the oil filter. In this specific full synthetic oil formulation, Honda does not use much magnesium at all. Zinc and phosphorus are oil additives that act as anti-wear, antioxidant, and corrosion inhibitors. There is a trace level of barium, which is interesting because barium is technically no longer allowed in engine oils due to heavy metal toxicity concerns. It was previously used as a rust and corrosion inhibitor in synthetic oils, but is currently only allowed in grease as a thickener, so maybe this trace amount is from engine assembly grease, which is placed onto the bearings and other parts to reduce friction and damage on the engine's first startup. Overall, when it comes to engine oil additives, these elemental levels will vary wildly from brand to brand. From your basic economy oil to expensive full synthetic formulations, the detergents and additives will be much more prevalent and complex for higher quality oils. Blackstone Labs did not bold in these results as out of the ordinary for this reason. I have many more oil samples from other vehicles and applications to send for testing, so if you want to see future lab results, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. The next test completed was for oil viscosity, which is measured in two ways. SUS viscosity stands for Sable Universal Viscosity, which measures how fast oil drains through a specific sized opening at a certain temperature. The machine used for this is called a Sable viscometer. CST stands for Centistokes and is the quantity of volume and time it takes oil to flow through a capillary tube viscometer. A capillary tube viscometer is a test where an oil sample is placed into a glass capillary U-tube and the sample is drawn through the tube using suction until it reaches the start position indicated on the tube side. Flashpoint measures when the oil will ignite, so a lower than average reading will indicate contamination with fuel, which dilutes the oil and makes it more susceptible to ignition. This is a direct injection engine, which are usually prone to fuel getting past the piston rings, so a fuel level under 0.5% is a great result. I will be measuring this with every oil change to see if the levels increase, so stay tuned for future oil test results. Finally, a test for the total base number, which is a lubricant's reserve alkalinity, was calculated at 3.8. Over time, combustion byproducts will form acidic compounds which will degrade the oil. TBN indicates the amount of performance-related alkaline additives left in the engine oil. In more simple terms, it helps you know when to change your engine oil. Overall, I think this was a pretty cool exercise where science meets auto repair. If you have any questions or advice, please leave them in the comments section below.